In this video, I'm going to show you how I source my icons for my Figma designs. And this is a second video of a series where we are essentially creating a home automation app in Figma. It's just the design, but the key thing here is that we are using auto layout to achieve this. Auto layout is key. It saves a lot of time. And as I said in the previous video, no more trying to measure pixels, no more trying to see if some things are aligned or not. Auto layout does everything for you. So make sure to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel to see how we progress through this design using Figma and auto layout. But in this video, I'm gonna show you how I source my icons. There's many ways of doing it, many free versions, many paid versions. So let's jump right into it. All right, so in our previous video, we created two frames, dashboard and living room. And we also dropped in a basic rectangle. And I showed you a little bit about auto layout, but as we go through this entire video series, we're definitely going to dive into it more deeper. And the second thing I want to add is the whole design, this whole video series, it is focused on auto layout. Auto layout is just great. All right. So in this video, though, we are going to get these icons. I'm going to show you some of the ways that I do this. Now, here's the key to it. I am using a plugin and the plugin is called Iconify. It is a great plugin. I've been using it for years, but it's important to know that there's a lot of icons out there. I use this just because it's quick and easy. But if I want to use an icon that's more customized, I normally go for something like flat icon. Flat icon is great. It's a free version, it's a paid version. I normally go for the paid version. It just gives you way more access to a lot more assets. Okay, so what we're going to do here is essentially I'm going to create a new frame. I'm gonna call this frame icons. What we wanna do is we want to replicate this because when you look at the actual design that we're going to create throughout this video series, you can see that we have a lot of icons that we wanna use a lot of icons specifically to the design. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna change the background just to something a little bit more gray. Again, this is just a placeholder. And in the next few videos, I'm also gonna show you how to do assets and add it to your assets as a component. But for now, we're just gonna drop it in here. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna click on the actual frame or canvas or whatever you wanna call it. I'm gonna click on plugins and you can search icon and iconify will kind of pop up. And I already started by searching for an icon, but you'll see that this iconify has access to a lot of different icons. They claim that they have about 170,000 icons. I'm not 100% sure if that's true or not. I do know though that they do have a lot of icons and they use different types of libraries to be able to showcase it in one plugin, which is great. First thing I'm going to do is we're gonna create a couple of icons. I already started typing in bulb. We want to be able to get the bulb icon as part of our home automation app. Just to kind of show you here real quick before we jump into it, I have quite a few icons, as I've said before, and we want to make sure that we start from the top. So I'm going to start with the bulb because that was the first thing I started with, but normally I like to go top to bottom. So let's start adding the bulb and then we will move forward by adding more icons from the top bottom. Again, I created this design myself as an example in this YouTube video. Okay, so I'm going to open up the icons again. We're gonna start by searching bulb. We're gonna get a quite a significant amount of icons that we can use. I'm just for simplicity reasons, I'm going to select the first one that I really like. When you scroll down, you'll see that there's more settings that you can play around with. I am going to change the color that I want and I'm gonna change it to white, which is triple F, and make sure that the height of it is 25. If you don't change the height, it normally by default comes in at 512 pixels, which is quite big and it's very cumbersome to kind of resize. So I'm gonna go ahead and import the icon. You're gonna see it's adding it to our frame right there, which is perfect. So the next icon I'm gonna look at is the plus icon. And I normally go for round edges just because that's a modern design feature. The sharp edges, eh, it's not really what I like. Again, you can do whatever you want. I don't wanna go for something that thick. I wanna go for that icon, which is perfect. Okay, so you'll notice that it will automatically adapt what you've done in the previous icon that you've added. And when you close it and open it up, it will still have the same settings, which is good. We're gonna make sure it's white again. We're gonna make sure it's 25. I specifically mentioned this because sometimes if you close Figma or come back, it will go back to default. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and add this icon. You'll see that it neatly adds it to the other icon, which is great. Okay, so the next one I want is notification. So I'm just gonna type in notification. I'm gonna go for bell and let's go for this one. And again, white 25 pixels, great, that's imported. Perfect, and the next one I'm gonna go for is, let's just close this guy and see what we need. So we need the weather. So I'm gonna go ahead, click on my canvas or my frame, 
and go back to plugins and we are going to just type in weather all right so and then i'm going to select this guy it's white 25 import perfect so the other thing that i really don't like about this plugin which is something that's a little tedious is that it puts it inside of a frame and that's not something i really like you know that's just a personal preference some designers might like it i honestly don't see how you would like it but what you can do is you can select all of them you can right click and you can say ungroup so it will literally take when you look at the the layers on the left hand side you will see that it literally takes all those frames and gets it out of the way all right so that is essentially how i get my icons it's a quick and easy way there is quite a lot of icons that you can get out there and there are some great paid ones there are some great free ones as well and here's another one is google also has their own icons which I also really like. In the next video, I'm gonna show you how to create buttons that just looks great. And we're going to use auto layout to be able to create those buttons. So buttons like this, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. And I'm going to show you how to create a little switch function like this by using auto layout only. So make sure to check out the next video where I'll create buttons and switches. Thanks for watching.